Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out all the amazing new tools, resources, courses, and some really big updates in the AI world as well in the field of UX UI design. Also this Wednesday, which is 5th of March, I'm doing a live workshop where I'll be fixing your UI designs, improving your UI designs, doing everything live with you guys. And it's absolutely free to join for anyone of any level. It's from 9.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. IST online over Google Meet. So anyone from anywhere can join. All right, so the first one is a major Figma release, a major Figma update. This update comes with a revolution for slides and presentations. Inside Figma slides, we can now access a lot of the plugins that we had in Figma earlier. So a lot of the animation plugins, a lot of the mock-up plugins, everything that we sort of took for granted earlier is now here in Figma slides. The FigJam platform has also had a lot of updates, including a large icon library for your brainstorming and whatnot. You can now tweak and edit stroke color and fill color separately as compared to what you could do before. You also have movable connector labels, which is once again a cool thing if you're doing card sorting and if you're trying to label a lot of the material in your FigJam. We also now have a file view history. That means you'll get to know who is viewing your files live. Now they specify that this is only for the invited guests that you've sent the link to or people in your team and organization only. So you can, you do have some privacy. I'm not sure if this is something that everybody wants, but this could be a nice little touch for a lot of people wondering, has my manager checked my work out yet? That could be one use case. Talking about Figma updates, we now have a Jitter update for Figma slides. That means Jitter, the famous animation tool in Figma, now works with Figma slides, bringing all the powerful animation. You can seamlessly transfer all your presentation files or pages to Jitter, add all the cool animations that you could enter, exit animations and whatnot, and then present that as a presentation. How cool is that? You can also now multi-select layers and frames in Jitter. So you can animate a lot of different layers in one go. That is very good because earlier you had to do it one by one and it took a lot. Okay, so this next tool is perfect for freelancers or designers who want to start freelancing using AI tools. This is called Fiverr Go from Fiverr, of course. Fiverr is going to pay you for your work being a part of their AI models. So if you have an illustration work or UI design work up on Fiverr, you can actually give Fiverr access to those files and Fiverr will create an AI bot out of you. And every time someone uses your AI model, you get paid. So essentially an AI is doing the work for you and people, this way you can cater to a lot more people a lot faster. You're essentially training AI models using your already existing work, written work, design work, whatever you do on Fiverr. Now, I think this is a step in the right direction for AI because in this case, more people will now have access to your work. You will get credited for it and you get paid for that creation. And the fact that you can now freelance using AI could be a new way for design and creative skills going on these platforms like Fiverr and Upwork and whatnot. Figma is dead. That a lot of people are these days saying, it does frustrate me, but Framer is one step closer to Figma now. They have introduced a lot of new updates which are very similar, which are inspired from a lot of the features that Figma has. For example, selection colors are here. You'll be able to select color on your complete web design and change colors of different elements from one place. This is very similar to the selection colors on Figma. So very, very similar execution as well as easier to use now because you don't have to, because now you just can just select an entire area and change different colors altogether instead of doing it one by one. That was tedious. They've also introduced a lot of cool open source fonts to the font library on Framer. A lot of these look so majestic, so interesting that even I want to use them and they've partnered with studios as well to bring their premium resources for Framer users. That is so cool. They now also have free scaling. So just like in Figma, you can just drag and scale perfectly. Now Framer has that scaling tool inside, inside its tool, Framer, which is really cool. Now talking about design tools, I did a video a few weeks back called Figma to real app with AI. 
And this is this features a tool called Lovable. Lovable allows you to just type in a prompt or even import your Figma designs. It converts your designs or your prompt into a fully functioning web app whether it be a dashboard for a tool or it be a gradient generator, whatever you imagine, you can put in here, it, it generates a coded out developed application for you to then copy into your projects or even publish as a website immediately. Now what's cool is that they've recently introduced a lot of visual editors. So once you import your Figma designs into Lovable to convert into a coded out application, you can then tweak around and work around the design and everything that it has produced for you in Lovable. So it's kind of like a design tool in itself, but it's converting your designs into a fully working functional web app, which is really cool. If you want to check out a complete tutorial on how to convert your Figma designs into a fully functional app, the link will be of course in the description. I've done a complete mini tutorial on it, so you can check that out. Now, generating or building a design system can take days, weeks, even months. Figure Identity wants to instantly convert your design file into a functional you can use in other tools. This is called Figure Identity. Now, this will convert even things like colors into proper tokens for developers to then identify which token is what, for other designers working with you, be able to easily navigate and choose the right colors, choose the right fonts, choose the right padding, whatnot. And it does so in a very organized format. Once again, you don't have to tweak anything. It's all generated for you. And it also builds components. So buttons, cards, everything will be organized into components. So your entire team can use it all within seconds. It won't even take like an hour or so. It just takes a couple of seconds, maybe a minute at max. And your design file will have a nice structured design system, which you can use in your company. I wish we had this back when I was a full-time UX designer. This would have saved us hours, if not days. Adobe is always in the news for either good or something bad. But this time it's of course something really good. I think it's high time they did this. Photoshop is finally coming to mobile. Earlier we had Lightroom on mobile. You can download Lightroom on any mobile device, but Photoshop with a lot of the crucial Photoshop features is now coming to your phone. They've already launched a iOS app. I recently switched to Android, so I really can't try it out, but they also are coming soon to Android. You can sign up for the beta version and you can try it out on Android, but I am super happy. This will make editing photos or even tweaking some things on my YouTube thumbnails or Instagram posts and whatnot real quick. It has your AI features as well. So all, so removing people, removing cars from image or whatever it is, you can do that. You can even swap backgrounds. You can edit colors. You can tweak hues, all of that good, powerful AI Adobe capabilities, Photoshop capabilities on your phone. I haven't tried it out yet. If anyone has tried it out, please let us know in the comments. Is it a good tool to have on our phones for quick editing? Now this next tool is AI tool generator for creatives. So if you're a designer, creative, photographer, whatever you are, you can create your own AI tools, which you or your team can use. It's called WebDraw. And it essentially allows you to create these custom apps or pick up from what other people are building. So for example, an AI image to video converter. You put in your image and you'll get a video out of that image. Someone also created a perfect landing page designer using this AI tool generator. You don't need to have any expertise in AI. Anyone can build their own AI design tool, creative tool, writing tool, whatever you want. Now, I have always tried to give examples to people who ask me, hey, why is UX design important? Wayne Yap recently created this really cool Twitter thread, which defines how Notion went from bankruptcy to a billion dollar startup because of UX design and the founder's relentless pursuit of human psychology, of cognitive science and whatnot. This takes you from how Notion almost went bankrupt, what was the cause, and how the founders decided to shift to Japan, learned minimalism and the art of design, the user experience, did user research and testing in Japanese streets and cafes, and finally relaunched Notion to the public and became the hit they are now. So the entire story, story backed with videos, content, links, whatnot, and how Notion is 
just an example of how U UX can back a great product. Talking about gradients, 1000 plus premium gradient assets on the web, a lot of different variations of styles and whatnot on gradient dot supply. I think this is really cool. I'm a huge fan of gradients. I use it almost everywhere. I create my own, but this one's great collection for you. You can check out freebies as well. So you have all the freebie library as well as you have the premium library. So whatever you choose, you can do it here. Once again, great cool resource for designers to pick up gradients. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I'm super excited to bring all the cool resources that we had this month. Also, if you're interested in attending my free workshop, it's on Wednesday, which is like day after tomorrow at night, Indian standard time. But of, of course, for other people, different time zones, just check that out first. You don't have to give any information, just your email and you can quickly sign up for this. Also, during this event, I will be checking your designs, fixing or improving your designs, helping you do that. If you're a beginner or even a senior who just you know, wants to find a new style for the UI or see how I create UI designs, please be sure to join this little event and I'll keep on doing more if you guys join in. Again, once again, thank you so much for all your support. A quick thumbs up goes a long way. See you every week just like this. Until next time, take care. God bless.